Hi, I'm Steve Pottinger, and welcome to the first video installment from Nikon Spling, the unofficial guide to Nikon speed lighting. Over the next four minutes, we're going to cover the most basic aspects of ITTL, including which ITTL mode to use and how to set it, good technique for metering with ITTL, and finally, how to use a very handy feature called flash value lock. Now, a big part of using a speed light is learning to balance its light output with the ambient light in your scene. Nikon has made this job fairly easy with Intelligent Through the Lens Metering, or ITTL. It works with both your pop-up flash and the latest generation of Nikon speed lights, incidentally, whose model numbers are greater than 100, like SB800 or SB600. So how does ITTL actually work? It sends a pulse of light from your flash just milliseconds before the shutter opens. The camera's meter measures light reflected off of objects in the scene to calculate and set the speed light's power output, and then immediately takes the picture. And the really good news is all this happens in just a few milliseconds. ITTL has two modes. Standard ITTL mode is what you'll want when your subject is against a very dark background. It only takes the brightness of your subject into account and ignores everything else. ITTL BL is Nikon's new balance light mode. It does its best to balance the brightness of the subject and the background. So with ITTL BL, the camera meters the ambient light across the entire frame and attempts to set the speed light's power to light the subject at a comparable level of brightness. To switch between the two modes, you change the camera's meter setting between spot for ITTL and matrix for ITTL BL. The camera's metering mode and ITTL are always hardwired together in this way. If you're using a pop-up flash, you'll find some Nikon cameras like the D300 provide a switch for changing the metering mode, while other models use a combination of button and dial movement. If you're using a speed light, you'll always see the mode clearly displayed there. Extra bonus. Okay, so now that we've covered the two ITTL modes and how to turn them on, let's look at metering technique and how to get the best results. If you're like me, the owner's manual is where you go when something isn't working. I always thought my speed light was providing decent results, but I never realized how much better it could do if I actually used the technique recommended in the manual. Who would have guessed? So here's the key. Both ITTL modes use the very center of the frame to meter the flash. If your composition has a subject located off-center, you need to follow this simple procedure. First, uh, center your subject in the frame and push your flash value or FV lock button to measure and lock in the flash power. Then move the camera to your desired composition and press the shutter release. Some cameras like the D300 have a programmable function button that can be set as the FV lock button. On other models, like the D70, you can reprogram the AE lock button to act as the FV lock button. Your camera indicates that the flash value lock is on when it displays this icon in your viewfinder and on your camera's LCD panel. A bonus to using flash lock is that if you're photographing someone who is hypersensitive to flash, they are much less likely to have their eyes closed in your photos because the camera doesn't need to use the pre-flash. Remember to turn the flash value lock off when you're done shooting. It stays locked shot after shot until you push the FV lock button again or turn off the camera's power. Before we wrap up this segment, I should mention that there's a complete lesson on ITTL over on my blog at NikonSpling.com, the unofficial guide to Nikon speed lighting. Until next time, thanks for watching.